Cambodia and the French Indochina, 1863 to 1953. But first, we have to explain some background information. In the 19th century, Cambodia was under threat to the Siam, which is modern-day Thailand, and the Vietnamese. This greatly weakened their kingdom. So why did the French come to Cambodia? The French initially came to colonize Cochin, China, which is southern Vietnam. After seeing Cambodia, which was rich in resources like rubber and minerals, and in its weakened state, they saw the opportunity to expand their Indochina colony. The CM, who were going against them, were also pro-British, who were the French's rivals. Okay, now we can begin. Due to the threat from its neighboring countries, King Norodom, the reigning king during that time, requested a French protectorate, which became known as the Treaty of 1863. Under French rule, King Norodom was still ruling, however, he held very little power. The French took charge of foreign trade relations and provided military protection. The French developed rubber plantations, exported rice, built roads, buildings, translated temple inscriptions, and worked in archaeology, but they didn't have an education or legal system. Jean de Cox, who was the Indochina Governor General, selected King Norodom Sihanou as the new Cambodian ruler in hopes to manipulate the young, inexperienced king. King Norodom Sihanou was crowned in 1941, not to be confused with the other King Norodom we mentioned. In 1940, during World War II, France fell under Nazi Germany. Japan took advantage of the French's weakness and invaded and occupied the French Indochina colony, which included Cambodia. Under Japan's rule, Cambodia was able to gain a brief period of independence. However, in 1946, the French came back and re-established its control and the Japanese gave way. But the Japanese encouraged King Norodom Sihanouk to fight for Cambodia's independence. Due to national disputes, in 1946, the First Indochina War began. The main battle was between the Vietnamese and the French. To seek Cambodia's full independence, King Sihanouk flew to France to meet the French president. However, they did not come to an agreement. He also traveled to Japan, U the U.S., and Canada. It was a bold move because the French could have replaced him at any time. Sixteen months later, King Norodom Sihanouk joined forces with Lieutenant Colonel Lenoir. pressure from the Cambodian political parties and the persistence of the king, the French ultimately gave way. In 1953, the French finally granted Cambodia its independence. King Norodom Sihanouk was able to march triumphantly back to Phnom Penh after gaining Cambodia's independence. A year after Cambodia's independence, the Indochina War finally ended, and Vietnam finally got its independence. Summary time, because just in case you didn't listen. So who was involved? Indochina, which included Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia. And of course, France, Japan, and a bit of the US and Canada were involved. And the main people involved were King Norodom, John de Cox, Norodom Sihanouk, and Lono. First off, in 1953, 
Cambodia signed a treaty and France took control over Cambodia and the Indochina region. Then, they selected King Notre Dame Sir Nuk as king. Due to the damage that World War II had on France, Japan was able to take over, and during this time Cambodia experienced a period of independence. However, the French returned to take back what was theirs. After seeking help from multiple countries and his persistence, King Notre Dame Sihanouk was able to win Cambodia's independence. So what type of imperialism was used? It was indirect control because they tried to use the king to control the land and protectorate because they protected Cambodia from its neighboring countries. And the results were the Indochina War ended with the Vietnamese's independence and victory. The French helped develop the country through building roads and buildings. And of course it resulted in Cambodia's independence. But not only that, we were able to maintain friendships between other countries. Which is why even today you see monuments, buildings, and bridges dedicated to friendships.